Good morning, first grade, are you here? Let me hear you. Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Good morning, dear first grade. Ready for the morning verse, standing up, reaching up, giving the sky and the sun a big hug. The sun, with loving light, makes bright for me each day. Say it with me. The heart, with sacred power, gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I, with all my might, may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. <clears throat> Morning has come, sing with me. Night is away, rise with the sun and welcome the day. Oh, I like to rise when the sun she rises early in the morning. I like to hear the small birds singing merrily upon their way. Hooray for the life of a cone of kid tumbling in the sunlit waves. Well, Today I have to, oh, my notes over here, I have a new alliteration for you, a new something to say with a lot of d, d, d sounds in it, and that is d, d, letter D, which I already put up there even though, oh, I switched them around, that's unfortunate. I have the capital D on the bottom and the other one on the top. Lowercase needs to be on the bottom. Uppercase needs to go on top. And these are two letters which do not look particularly alike. Just like some children do not look exactly like their parents. And that is a tricky one. And I have a trick for it though. This, if you can imagine, is a bed. B, E in the middle, F and the D at the end. So lowercase b and lowercase d. Of course, b in sign language, b is like this, so maybe we should do it like that. That's a little more complicated. The shape of it is really what I'm talking about with the tall line on this side, the tall line on that side, so b and d, b and d. And I realize that's not an e, but if I put them like this, it kind of looks like a bed with a top and a bottom. And I can remember that B is in the beginning and D is at the end. And that might be helpful. So anyway, B, B, D, D, D. We're working on D today. Yesterday, Tom and Juneberry discovered that a duck tipping its head upside down uh, looked like a D and a few other things we can review as well. That seemed a bit of a stretch to me. I did not want to try and draw a duck tipping its head over, trying to look like a D. Uh, but that was funny, and you can do that if you'd like to. I, instead, am going to do a different do, a d d different d d drawing. Hmm, that worked out well. And, but today, first, we're going to talk about some other D words. I have a tiny little silly poem or two. Dan's dog. Uh, Dan's dog died during a dream. Dan's dog died during a dream. I hope it was a good dream. It would not be such a bad way to die if you were in a dream, I suppose. Uh, if it was a good one, especially. Dad's dog, no, dad's dog, yeah. Dad's dog died during a dream. D dad's dog died during a dream five d sounds. And then I have another one. Um, Dan dipped a dozen delicious donuts in his drink. Dan dipped a dozen delicious donuts in his drink, which sounds better than dying during a dream, I suppose. Dan dipped 
uh, a dozen delicious donuts in his drink. Dan dipped a dozen delicious donuts in his drink. All d, d, d words. Dan is a person. Dipped is a doing thing. Delicious. Oh, a dozen is, is how many it was. A dozen is 12. Maybe you did not know that. But if you have a dozen eggs, there's always 12 in a dozen. And if you look at your egg carton, you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six like that. And you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six like that. Sometimes they also put them in a big, in a bigger one, which I think is either two dozen or maybe it's 18, I can't remember, but this is a dozen, it's 12. Dan dipped a dozen delicious donuts in his drink. Delicious is the describing word that we describe the donuts. The donuts, of course, are a thing. And a drink is a thing too, isn't it? So all different kinds of words go into sentences. Um, so that's that, day and date. Oh, d -d day and d -d date. Day and date. Day and date. Today is, today is, today is Tuesday. Use d, d, a, Tuesday, Tuesday, September, September twenty two, twenty second, the twenty second, like the first and the second and the third. This is the twenty second. You have to put this at the end. 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 At the end. At the end. The end of the word end is end. Just like at the end of the word twenty second is end. That's twenty second. 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 That's a funny thing to do, isn't it? To have to do that. Twenty second, two thousand twenty. Today, we, we, I'll read it and then we will read it together. Today is Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. Together, today is Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. And it is the 20th day of school. 20th day of school, 20 is written like this, 2-0, the 20th day of school, hooray, it seems like we have learned more than we could possibly learn in 20 days, I must say, and that feels pretty good. The days of the week in English, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Not going to do any good unless you say it with me. <laughs> There's no point in me saying it by myself. Ready? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and back to Tuesday. In Spanish, two times around, um, martes, that's today, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo, lunes, keep going, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado, Domingo and lunes. There we go. In Spanish, hoy es uh, martes 22 de septiembre 2020. Together, you can try to say it with me if you want. Hoy es martes 22 de septiembre 
dos mil veinte. Very good. Counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, with your fingers, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Hooray, and Auntie Jackie is here just on time to finish the PhD. Good morning. Good morning, Good first grader. Good morning. How are you guys today? Hmm. So today I wanted to kind of look at things, look like stop what I'm thinking about, stop what I'm doing, and take a breath. And when you saw me yesterday, if you were watching, I was moving more slowly, and I told you I had toothache. So I took advantage of that opportunity to just be sit in my garden and think and listen. And so I'm gonna invite you guys to do that today after you have your class with Mr. Coulter. I'm gonna invite you to do that. And when you go outside and you sit quietly, you might find out some things. You might like, oh, I noticed this. And so when you go outside and you're just being quiet and listening, I'm gonna invite you to listen to what sounds you can hear right now. So that is what I'm asking you to do today after your class with your teacher. Yesterday I asked you if you could see the moon. So I saw the moon. I was just going to bed. I go, I go to bed later than you guys. But I saw it in the sky, in the dark sky. And it was a small moon and it was heading towards the ocean. And it was, a, it was just a piece of the moon. It wasn't a full round thing that we could see, but it was more the curve, like the line curves that we're working with, with Mr. Coulter. It was a curve of a moon. So it, it's school week, so you probably aren't gonna go see the moon, but guess what? It's gonna show up um, earlier and earlier in the night. So by the time the weekend comes and it's getting dark, and there's no school tomorrow, you can go out and look at the moon. So last night I asked you to look at the moon, think about the moon again, and when you finish with Mr. Coulter, go find a quiet spot and just see what the sounds are, hear what the sounds are. When you're finished hearing the sounds, just look around and see what you can see. This is what I saw today. Yesterday I was showing you this corn plant, and today it's already showing us more green leaves because it was in the sunlight. And there's even a little guy coming right out, right there. That's a little one coming out. <laughs> it's hard to show you on the screen. And the other thing that I wanted to share with you is this plant. It has a very small flower right here at the tip. It has pattern leaves that I enjoy looking at. I can really tell, I can really see these leaves when I show up. And this one is something that Uncle Barrow taught me is a medicine plant. So when I was in the garden, I collected a whole bunch of these. I'm going to give the flower to Mr. Coulter to put in the flower jar. It's such a tiny flower. Look at this little guy. That is a tiny flower. It hardly has flower petals. 
but it's making seeds. And the rest of it, I'm gonna put in my teacup. So I already checked with Uncle Barrow. I also talked to another teacher and then I looked in a book to make sure this is the right plant. And I'm gonna put all these leaves in the teacup and maybe a couple of stems. And I'm gonna pour hot water over it and wait mm, probably 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna sip my medicine. So when I sit in the garden and I'm pretty quiet, it gives me a chance to realize what's important and it, I help, it helps me see things I didn't see before. When you get out in your garden, even if you're just the umble of an eye or you're enjoying the clouds, ah, it's a good time to relax and learn what nature can teach you. So that is today. Here's your flower, tiniest flower I have brought. And my challenge to you is to go outside and listen. Aloha. students that they surely do love it when you come in. So thank you again. For thank you. Time. Thank you for that. You don't need any three counting games? No, that's good for today. Thank you. All right. Yes, she's remembering Sailor went to CCC and I hope that you are practicing that all the time because it's fun and we'll start a new clapping game next week, uh, most likely. And now, um, getting back to, oh, a little bit of, um, a little bit more, a little bit of more math. So we did our counting. And we did, uh, we talked about how five plus five is 10. We talked about how nine plus one more is 10. We talked about how, let's see, let me do eight, five, six, seven, eight. How eight, please do it with me. How eight fingers, all these and three more. Eight fingers plus two more make 10. We talked about how, let's see, there's five, six, seven fingers. And how many more make 10? One, two, three. Three more make 10. And today I want to talk about how six, and how many more? Let's check. One, two, three, four. Six and one, two, three, four make 10. And I want you to just memorize that six and four make 10, just like I want you to memorize all the other ones. Today we will do a little example of that. And we will say there were once six bunny rabbits, six bunny rabbits down in their burrow, and they were wondering where their other brothers and sisters had gone. They were hopping around after dark, almost dark, and guess who's walking around after dark looking for a fresh bunny rabbit to eat? But the fox. Some stories the fox is mischievous and bad, other stories the fox is smart and good. I have a story today about a smart, good fox, but first let's do this. <laughs> Six little bunny rabbits and four more came hopping around outside and then they heard a little noise and they, one, two, three, four, popped down into their burrow, safe and sound, and now all 10 were there. If one hops up to sniff around in the morning to see what she can see, she was up earliest, and she went up, and now there were nine down there. And then another one opened his sleepy little eyes and hopped up to see what he could see and hear what he could hear. What was that sound? Hmm, fuzzy bees. And then another one smelled some something as she woke up and went up and saw some clover, and now there were seven. Do it with me. There were seven little bunny rabbits asleep in their burrow, and one sniffed a little smell and went up to find her sister and brothers. Now there were only six. How many were up sniffing around up, to, up in the daylight? One, two, three, four. But now there were only six down in the burrow, and one more went up to go see what he could see and hopped around, and now there were only five left in the burrow. Five in the burrow, and five jumping around, eating clover, and listening. Listening to all the sounds of the world with their big, tall ears. So, math and bunny rabbits at the same time. Isn't that pleasant? <laughs> all right, now, now new shoes, because we have to get up and do a little moving around every once in a while. Otherwise, 
he will go crazy sitting around doing nothing all the time. So here I will put my shoes in the camera to start with, and then we'll I'll do whole self. All right, ready? Standing up and put one foot out. Say new shoes, new shoes. Jump. Red and brown, cross and blue shoes. The hard part, fat shoes and flat shoes and stomp around like that. Shoes. Which, up on your tiptoes, which shoes shall I choose? Two more times. New shoes, new shoes. Red and brown and blue shoes. Fat shoes and flat shoes and stomp around like that. Shoes. Which shoes shall I choose? One more time. New shoes, new shoes. Red and brown and blue shoes. Fat shoes and flat shoes and stomp around like that. Shoes. Which shoes shall I choose? Hooray! A stomping poem. <laughs> Alright, now, duh, duh, duh. this is some people's favorite part, I think. We have some stuff that starts with a duh, 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 and then we have to draw our dragon. Okay, let's see what we have here. And then your homework is to go around your house and figure out all the things that you can find to pile up that are not too heavy and um, can be safely moved around that start with a D. Here is a D doll. I like that one. She's very dear. Speaking of deer, a different kind of deer. Here's a deer. A deer that lives in the forest. Hmm, I think you know what that is. D -d dog. You can say it before I say it. Here is a drum. D drum. Oh, this is one of my favorite insects. Because I love them because they can fly backwards. It's a d Dragonfly. Dragonfly. Oh, these are especially wonderful to learn about. D dinosaurs. Wouldn't it be cool if there were little tiny dinosaurs living all around, like the bugs that we have living around with us? They kind of look like bugs in a way. But they're not dinosaurs. Oh, yes. Here's a certain kind of a d duck, a mallard duck, a great duck. And duck was featured in a couple of our stories. There was uh, Hansel and Gretel, he used a duck to get across the water, carried them across the water. And yesterday we learned about the duck in the shape of a D. There's another d little dog. And here we have something very special for people who live near the ocean in Hawaii, especially a dolphin. This one's a rather sad looking dolphin. I think we should find a different dolphin. Oh, if you, do, <laughs> if you do not have your real teeth anymore, if you do not take care of your teeth, maybe you didn't know this, if you do not take care of your teeth well, you end up having to get some fake teeth. And there's a fancy word for fake teeth. It's called d dentures, dentures. A lot of older people, their teeth just get so messed up after a while that they have to just have some fake ones instead. Here is, let's see, lowercase d and capital D. And here is one of my favorite things to have to play with a die, or two of them we call dice. There's the one, two, 
the three, the four, the five, and the six. So that's your other homework, to play games with dice. Play games with dice. It's a good thing to do. Especially if your name is Donald or Dan or with your dad. D -d -d. Lots of D sounds. All right. Leave that like that. Before we erase this and draw our dragon, I guess we may as well review this. We have some words to read, to review, because that is a big part of school, is learning how to read and write. A big part of school, for sure. One of the very important parts. So, and my job and your parents' job is to help you learn how to do all this reading. So please come along with me, and we'll start with k ah, er. I notice ah is making the wrong kind of noise for an A. Usually it says ah, like apple. And this one is saying ah. So tricky A sometimes has a different kind of a sound. K ar, k ar, b ar, b ah, er, b ar, bar, b ar, bar, bar, t ah, er. I hope you're doing this with me. Kind of pointless for me to do it by myself. I already know how to read. <laughs> far, far, far. And even if this does seem hard or easy, it doesn't matter. Just do it anyway, and we'll build on it little by little. And now we have the ams. Am, am. Finally, a, ah, like apple. A saying its proper short vowel, short sound. It's short sound. Short sound says ah, ah, am, am, I am, s, am, sam, 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 er, am, er, am, er, am, er, am, ha, am, ha, am, ham, ham, and b, am, b, am. Bam, bam, yeah, okay. Lots and lots of things you can do to help yourself grow and learn. Practice a little bit every day at least. Some of you love doing this so much and it's so exciting to learn how to read. And others, I know, I know sometimes it doesn't feel fun to do all this stuff. I know, I know. Just a little bit every day at least though, please. A little bit every day, even weekends. Mm -hmm. Even during vacation, which is coming up. All right, here we go. The dragon. And then hopefully there'll be time for me to tell you a story. So I wrote on here, D is for dragon. D is for dragon. Main lesson book. And you can turn it sideways. See, I've turned mine sideways. It's not the regular way like this. Please put the binding, the spiral binding at the top like that. Make sure you're on the very next clean page, not, not, some random page anywhere in the middle, but right near, right in the very beginning. If you've skipped a page, just go back and you can put your dragon on that page. So your page is sideways, just like this. This is the top of my page up here. This is the bottom of my page down there. And I almost made my dragon too big. I didn't really have enough room for this fire to go out, so I made the just heat, smoke, fire going kind of straight up as if out. Um, so we will just do our best here. 
to get this drag on the page where it belongs. Let's see if I can put this over here. It doesn't make it very seeable for you, but that's okay. I'm going to fill up my whole blackboard here with my dragon page, and you are going to fill up your whole paper. So in this corner of your paper, down here in this corner, that's where I started my tail of my dragon. the glare makes it you so you can't see but that, that's okay we'll just do it on the blackboard I always start with a light color because that way if I make a mistake I can just cover it up with the background so I'm going to I wonder if it would be more fun to make a dragon with a, with a tail curling up so I'm gonna just like our form drawing these straight lines and curves I'm starting here in the corner of my page somewhere if you were doing it on here somewhere about right here I'm gonna make a curly tail that. Okay, so that's going to be the tail. And then its body is going to come up here. I'm going to probably put a leg right there. So we're still back in this corner of the, of the page. But I'm just, I'm not really going to draw that. I'm just sort of making a mark where I think that leg is going to be. And then its claw will be there. And I'm going to bring it on up like this. Just bring that line just on up. And then I'm going to put another little arm there. I'm just going to put a spot there. And I have to look back and judge, is it going to be in the right spot? And then it's going to come up a little bit, maybe. And it's going to have its mouth open. Its bottom teeth are going to be there. I'm not really drawing them. I'm just putting them there so I can see where they're going to be. And then its nose is going to be up there, up above that. Nose, like a bump there. Okay, see that bumpy shape right there above its, okay. So then the rest of its head, you put a bump for its eye right there. And I can make those smaller or bigger later. I can come back. Here's going to be the other teeth. It's going to be in there somewhere. The rest of its head goes this way. And I'm going to start making spikes on his back. But there's going to be a wing here. So I'm just going to go really lightly. Okay, now I'm getting, I gotta make them skinny down on this side. So by the time I get back toward this back leg, I'm going to try to get really skinny. I'm going to come down, down, like little steps. I'm going to keep going right next to, I'm going to get really close to this other line now. And I'm going to keep making spiky bumps like this. I'm going to make them smaller and smaller. And then maybe I'll do something fancy at the end, like a, like a fork or a spiky fork. Like that. All right. Now I'm going to go back to the head. This is kind of the trickiest part. I'm going to forget about this too big of a bump for the nose for now. I'm going to put an eyeball in there just to make me feel happy that there's an eyeball. And I'm going to go back with other colors and go right over this. On this one, I started with gold, so I could see it better than the yellow. And then I put a light green and then dark green. I even put some purple on it. And I put the purple on the wing after I filled it in with gold. And then I put the purple down here, too. So they kind of look like they match, but they also look a bit different, right? Because wings sometimes look different than the rest of the body. to go ahead and fill some of this body in like that. I'm leaving the mouth kind of open like that. I'm lightly filling in. Now this is the time to look at it and think, well, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it how it is. But if you didn't if you wanted the spikes to be taller or bigger, you could come up higher and just do different spikes up above those. And then I'm just going to join these other ones down here somewhere. And now I'm just going to fill all this in. I forgot to talk about the wing, though. So um, we do need to go over. So we're still working kind of lightly here. 
Let's stop right here and put on a wing. So I'm going to continue using the same color. I'm going to start somewhere between the, somewhere kind of near the front leg area, front leg area, and I'm going to put a big curve like that, just starting there, because the wing kind of attaches there. The curve is going to come way up like that. And then I'm going to make a couple of, this is partly why we do the form drawings, so it'll be a little easier to do this if you, if you practice on all those form drawings. So I could just come, I could come straight back down, and that will be an okay wing, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make some little, some little bumps like that. And then I land back there on the, on the dragon. And now I can color this over, and I'm going to try to cover up these bumps that I made. So I might have to go a little darker here to cover that up. Dragons. In some cultures, dragons are scary and evil and greedy and sit on a big pile of gold and terrorize people and burn down towns. In other cultures, dragons are the very best of best of luck. The best of luck and the most beautiful, magical, mysterious, and just the most wonderful thing that there could possibly be. So dragons are looked at, thought about, very differently in different cultures. Filling in this tale, V's for dragon doing things. Dragon does things. D -d -d does the dragon do? Is it dream? Is it drool? D drool? Like this? Drool in my little mouth. Does it dance? Okay. okay. This one also has a muscle that goes up. This is the legs on this side. Of course, it's going to have more than that. It's going to have a leg on the back side of that, or we could just leave that like that for now. Blending this color up into that a little bit so it looks like it's part of the same creature. All right, now it's time to get some green in there. I have yellow, so I could just put blue over it. I have some light green, too. Or you can just take your green crayon. Give it some color, additional color. A little bit up there. I think I liked it when I put the purple in the wing on my other one. Coloring right over stuff. You know, if you're using your block crayon, you can color right over stuff. I'm gonna put a little more green down in these areas too. Now, the question of teeth. I think I'm gonna stick with yellow or gold for the teeth on my blackboard. You may want to use just your 
any color you want, green, or you could use that gold color. I'll stick with gold, I guess. Make these teeth a little better. do my background, which I think I will use purple for. I'm going to try to cover up this mistake here. I'm going to put a little of this purple right on here too. I like that, how that came out. a little harder there. And if your purple and yellow are making kind of a brownish color, that's a good thing, I'd say. And also green and gold in there. And bring a little purple down right here. Lighter and lighter. Go right over that. You can even use your purple stick or block. And you can start to use whatever colors you think fit best to go over the top of this. I like it when there's lots of colors blended together. Put a darker color eyeball on there. Actually, probably red would be better. dragon's eye. And as long as I've got this red in my hand, flames, and blend a little orange into that. Maybe a little yellow. If you have some brown or black, you could do a little smoke. Blue or purple or blue and purple mixed for the black the background, or brown and blue mixed for the background. I use brown for my smoke, but you might use black since you're working on paper. You go right over this stuff with your background. D-D-Dragon. What else can the dragon do? Let's think of more doing words. Dragons dance and drool and uh, and dream. Oh, dig, they might dig. D, 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 dance, d, do, dream. Dilly dally, put a dragon dilly dally? Oh, probably so. Let's describe it now as d dangerous. D -d dangerous. A dangerous dragon. A dreamy dragon. I 
festival of strength and courage, usually we try to tame the dragon. It's wild and we try to tame it. That's another opposite word, it's wild and tame. So it might be wild or it might be tame. All right, I think I like that. I might take some blue now and add that to my background. especially when I'm moving around. You have to be a little more careful than me with a crayon than I do with a chalk. The chalk kind of covers itself back up again. Isn't that nice the way that looks when there's two colors? You kind of see both of them at the same time. Fun that is, I think. I feel like I wish there was a little more red in there somewhere. One time a teacher who I <clears throat> get is a really great artist told me, always put a little bit of the color that you're using here and there in the other things, even though that may not make sense. Like I'm gonna put a little blue right there because somehow the blue wants to reflect a little bit from the other blue. And what about some red? We've got red there. What if we put some, bring some red just out here? Lighting this up. All right. Well, the teeth could use a little work. The head could use a little bit more work. But I'm going to call that good enough for now. Getting close to being time to be finished. <clears throat> oh, here we go. A couple more things to show you as you can finish that dragon another time. But I want to show you this. So this is a flash card, and I made it myself. And you can make one by yourself or have a parent help you. Maybe you want the parent to do the writing and you can do the drawing. Or maybe you want the parent to do the drawing and you can do the writing. Or maybe you would like your parent to do the whole thing. Any of those ways is fine with me. But what I want you to be able to do is I want you to be able to say, look at that and say, A. And then I want you to look at it again and say, ah, ah. And if you're not sure, you turn it over and you say, oh yeah, apple, ah. And here's what we just did. D, what is, oh, I should show you this side first. I'd like you to see that and say, D, D. And now I want you to look at it and say D, D, not D, just D, 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 just the D sound. And if you're not sure what sound it makes, you turn it around and you can say, oh, that's a door, D, door, D, door, okay? I have not taught you this yet. This is an E, and I want you to look at it and say E, eh, E. Eh. I think you know what this is. We've learned this one already. It's a B, and what sound does it make? B, 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 B. And if you're not sure, you can flip it around and say, oh yeah, B, 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 B. B, B is for B, B. And then I have a couple more. I want you to look at that and say it's an H, but I also want you to look at it and say it's ha, ha. And if you forget, I turn it around and say, oh yeah, house. This I also have not taught you yet. This is an I, and its short sound is I, like igloo, I. Here's our old friend, friend. I want you to be able to say F, and I also want you to be able to say just If you forget its sound, you turn it around, and you can just say, oh yeah, that's a fish, so it's This is for cat. I do not want you to say cat. I want you to say k because it's the first sound in the word cat. K at. It's the sound all the way at the beginning. K at. So when I show you this, I want you to say C. K. If you can't remember the k when you look at this, 
and you think to yourself, that's a cat, and k, cat starts with k, so then you would say k, all right? So these, I only made that many so far. You can make your own, and you can practice the ones that you were not sure on. I have another thing to show you, one more thing. From now on, we're going to start doing this. So this is in a notebook. You have a notebook that I sometimes call your practice book. It may or may not look kind of the cover like that, and inside are the pages like that. And I made a copy of this. I had a blank copy like that. And at the top, I made a border. I made my uppercase and lowercase d, and then I practiced them. And even me as a grown-up can practice making d's. And that is a lot of work. I will tell you right now, you will find that is a lot of work. Maybe you cannot do it all in one sitting. Make sure your pencil grip is perfect. This is the time to be doing your perfect pencil grip. Even if, I do not care if they are a little sloppier because your pencil grip is not, is not your favorite way of doing it. You need three fingers on your pencil, just like that. Three fingers. Two on the top, one resting underneath, not four. Three fingers. It's awkward and uncomfortable if that's not your habit. This is the time to practice. So I used a border, of, I made a border with a, a block crayon. I used a stick crayon for the D's up here, which is what I want you to do. And then I used a pencil the whole way across. You do not need to erase them if you make mistakes. Just practice and then shake out your hand after you're doing one line. Shake out your hand, pick up your pencil again. Maybe even stretch your hand a little bit. Stretch your hand, stretch your hand, stretch your hand, shake them out and keep going. I made an uppercase and then lowercase and uppercase and lowercase. And then at the bottom, I made some sentences. I wrote sad dad had a bad day. Even though you don't know this word day yet, you have not learned why yet, but you can still copy that. I wrote sad dad had a bad day. I will post a picture of this on Coulter Kona Pacific, and I did it again without using all uppercase. I think this is a good way to do it, but if you want the extra challenge of doing it in lowercase, I wrote, I started my sentence with a capital letter, of course, and then the, the, this is a name, this is dad, that's, who you, that's, what he's, that's what he's called, so we name him that. So he's a person, and we're going to put a capital D there, too. Sad dad had a bad day with a period at the end. And the Y is the first lowercase letter that you see goes down below the line. There are many of those, several of those, but we will practice doing that later. So each of your letters that we've done so far, we're going to make one of these for probably. That would be a good extra challenge to get ahead on those if you are able. We just do this one for now. All right, so there it is. That is all I have for today. I like our drawing of a d dragon. I think it came out pretty well, actually. I was a little surprised. It's always a little challenging to draw and talk at the same time. But I'd love to see uh, pictures of your dragons. If you would have a photograph of them and send them to me, I would think that would really be special. And tomorrow we will write D is for dragon on our drawing, just like I did. All right, be well. Talk to you another time.